Hey guys, alright this is going to be a tutorial on how to make a really simple uh, top-down shooter control system. Uh, I'm going to use a airplane assets from the the new sample assets beta. Uh, they got a couple of cool models, you probably saw them on the screenshots. And we're going to throw those in here, make them a character, and move it around with the WASD keys. And we're going to make it look wherever the mouse is pointing. Okay, so it's really easy to set up. Uh, let's uh, let's make an empty game object to contain these models. We're going to call the guy uh, Captain Awesome because that's how easy this is. And we're going to throw the aircraft down in there. And we're definitely going to scale those down to say 0.2. Okay. We're going to need a character controller on Captain Awesome object and a rigid body. Let's add a rigid body and then add a character controller. And that collider's a little small, so I'm just going to bring that up a little bit. Move it upwards just a bit. There we go. That's good. Uh, let's give him some drag on the rigid body. So if we don't have any drag, he might just float off into oblivion. So let's go ahead and give it some. Alright, now let's add an FSM. And we're going to need to get the uh, uh, the key information. So the player is going to be pressing buttons, so we need to get that information. We're going to use get access vector. Now, uh, a lot of you are probably familiar with this, but uh, if you're not, this horizontal and vertical in here, it's going to read the project settings input. So there's uh, something called horizontal and vertical here, and it, horizontal is using the A and D keys, and vertical is using the W and S. So they're picking up uh, when the player presses them and storing them in floats. So what we're doing here is getting those values and then putting them into a vector that we can use. So we'll make a new vector, 3, and call it directional. Go back to the state, go to the directional, and that's where it's stored. So now we have the information that the player's pushing the keys, right? So what are we going to do with it? Let's use a controller simple move. This is really simple. So, it's really simple. It uh, just moves the character based on this directional vector that we're throwing into it right here. It's got a speed variable, and uh, we're going to want to put this on self space. Okay, that's all there is to the movement. Uh, let's set the camera up to follow him. We're going to add a new FSM to the camera. Add a smooth follow action. Drag Captain Awesome over into this slot. And let's let's bring these values up, maybe 13, 20, 15. That'll probably be good. And let's play. Now, WASD is moving the ship, but that's way too slow. So we'll just come over here, and you can either multiply the values that are coming in from the inputs directly, or you can add the speed here. So we'll just do it here. Let's put it on, say, 6. That'd probably be good. Now we have to make him turn. This movement looks pretty good. But he's not following the mouse, so next step is making him turn. I'm happy with the movement so far. Now, uh, the uh, trick you do here is you make another container object that uh, handles rotation. Because if you rotate this ship, uh, then the controls need to be relative to, to the main camera, and the camera can't rotate. And you have to stack on some more complexity to your system. Just to keep it real simple, all you got to do is just make another uh, container for this these objects that handles the rotation. So we're going to call this the ship stuff, just for simplicity, and then put the ship models under that object instead. So now we have 
Captain Awesome, ship stuff, and then the models, right? So Captain Awesome, this object, is going to be handling the movement, and it never rotates. So it's always going to be moving relative to that direction, this direction we're looking. And the ship stuff object is going to be handling rotation. So when it rotates, it's just a child, so it's not going to impact the direction of the, the object here above it, its parent. So this should work good. Let's add a new FSM. And the idea here is to use mouse pick to send a ray cast from the mouse into the scene, intersect with the floor, because if we don't intersect with anything, it's just going to go off into space. So we'll intersect with the floor on a layer, and then store the point that it hits. So we'll be able to feed that back into uh, a position for the ship to look at. So all you got to do is just mouse pick right there. Uh, we need a vector 3 to store the position. It's going to be the mouse point. Cool. Drop that right there. Do it every frame. And we want a layer mask. We want one layer. And we want to use the floor. And I've set these tiles up here to be on the floor layer already. So whatever floor, if you made a big cube, then you'll want to make sure it's on the floor layer or this won't work. Or whatever layer. You could put it on the water layer if you wanted to, as long as it as long as it's on the same one that you're masking here. Okay, so we're gonna add now a smooth look at. So we've stored the position that the mouse has intersected with. Now we're going to look at it. All you gotta do is smooth look at, target position, mouse point. And you're gonna do keep vertical so that if this is off, it would actually look down at the, uh, it, it would rotate down because it has to look down to see the point, right? So if you keep vertical, then it won't, it won't turn down. That's what we want. And we want the finish tolerance to be zero. What that does is basically it's like checking the every frame box. So it'll just keep doing this action. It'll never finish unless you do an event, which we're not. So that should do it. That's all there is to it. Let's see what happens. Cool. That's, uh, that's pretty much working perfect. Now, this is definitely not polished. You know, I, I wouldn't be publishing a game on these controls, but uh, this is a great starting point. It, at a bare minimum, you just spent five minutes prototyping a, a top-down shooter control scheme with no code. So that's that's how I would approach it at least to get a prototype out. And you can go in and you can set up, now that you've got these variables, like you've got the movement from the vector here, you can go in and, you know, do a bunch of physics actions in here and push it and, you know, make it roll different directions and do all kinds of fancy stuff. You can, you know, if you decide not to use this smooth look at, you could use a more complex custom action that properly interpolates between the forward and the, and the destination. So... Good starting point. That's that's one way to do it. So now you know. Hope it helps and uh, have fun with it.